When I first heard about GA4, one of the things that I was most excited about was that Google talked about how that you had the ability to change the attribution model for how conversions are counted, which is to say how conversions are attributed to different traffic sources, which had been a frustration for me and a lot of other people in, in Universal Analytics. We couldn't change the model, and the model was for uh, last non-direct click, which I'll describe in a little bit more detail, but more or less uh, amounts to the last way somebody got to a website gets all the credit for for conversions. As a marketer, it's not a great way of looking at things. I'm really interested in how all of my marketing efforts are contributing to conversions, not just the last thing people do before converting. So I was excited about that, but then I got into GA4 and I was like, hmm, how, how exactly do I have the ability to control the attribution model? And the reason I was curious about that is when you go into reports, if you look under acquisition, and this is where in Universal Analytics we would evaluate marketing performance, we have a couple of different reports. We've got the user acquisition, traffic acquisition. I'm in the Google Analytics demo account, uh, which is a, a, an account that Google makes available for anybody to uh, be able to view, uh, can't make changes, but um, in, so you can just search Google Analytics demo account to get access yourself. Uh, I point that out because the, the navigation is a little bit different than you might be used to um, because people have made changes to it over time. But in any case, you should have a user acquisition report and a traffic acquisition report. So what do those tell us? Well, the user acquisition report shows us how users arrived at the website and, uh, for the first time. So from a user standpoint, like if somebody comes multiple times, how did they get there in the first place? And the names of the dimensions in this report are first, uh, first user default channel group, first user medium, first user source, uh, etc. So this report tells us how people got to the website in the first place and then how many sessions, how many events, how many conversions. Um, so that's interesting, something we didn't get with, with Universal Analytics. Traffic, traffic acquisition is actually very similar to how Universal Analytics did it. This is showing us these session dimensions. So we have session default channel group, session source medium, etc. And these tell us how people arrive for a given session. So interesting, similar to Universal Analytics. Nice that I have the ability to see both, but I don't get to pick my attribution model. So I did figure it out. Uh, we'll get into that in a minute. But I, I do also want to just sort of go through attribution, just because I think it's a topic that there's a bit of confusion around just sort of what exactly it means. So let's talk about this for a second. I'm going to use the example of me shopping for a new pair of shoes. Uh, and let's say that I'm on Facebook and I get an ad for ultrarunning.com. And I visit the website. And it's the first time I've been to ultrarunning.com. On January 7th, after having visited via Facebook, I come back and I do a Google search for ultra or something. And I come back to the website and I don't purchase yet. But then I come back again on January 11th after clicking on a Google ad, and then I purchase. So the topic of attribution is which of these should get credit. And, and in the report we just looked at, the, we looked at the, the uh, user acquisition report, which uses these first user dimensions. And those are going to give credit to how I got there in the first place. And again, uh, if assuming that I hadn't been there before. If I'd been there before, if I'd visited the website before, there may have been a different source prior to that. So in any case, those dimensions are going to uh, tell you how I got there in the first place. The, the session dimensions are going to give how, on a given session, session, when I actually converted. In this case, the conversion is a purchase, but the conversion could be a lead form or anything else that you have defined as a conversion in GA4. So those session 
the session default channel grouping, session source medium, etc., are going to give credit to the last thing. The other thing to know is that if on my last visit I visited the website directly, which means like I typed it into my browser bar, I clicked on or I, I had it bookmarked or something, that I didn't actually come from another place and just pulled up the website, made a purchase, that's considered direct. And in both Universal Analytics and in, in GA4, uh, that direct visit won't get credit. So it'll go to the last sort of trackable source, in this case would be the Google Organic Listing. So in Universal Analytics was called last non-direct click, and that's what it meant, is anything other than direct. Now, there could be instances where the only way, like I just, um, Google Analytics or GA4 doesn't have any record of me having visited previously, and I visit direct and I purchase, so then it will give credit to the, to the direct traffic source in that instance. So, that's a little bit about kind of the concept of, of attribution. So now let's talk about this idea that I have the ability to pick attribution models. The, I, I'm in the demo account, and if I go to admin, I'm not actually going to see that I can pick the attribution model because I don't have sufficient permission. So I'm just going to hop over to my website, and I'm going to go to admin just to show you. And then from here, we've got attribution settings, and I can pick my attribution model. So it says data-driven recommended. That's actually the default. Um, and so that's what's specified here. This is what got me confused, because I was like, well, we have the first user dimensions. We've got the session dimensions. I don't actually, like, what what does this change? Um, was not at all obvious to me. <laughs> So there, there are also similar dimensions uh, to the source medium, source medium, default channel grouping that don't say first user, don't say session. Um, and I don't know, just as a quick example, we'll just pop into an exploration so you can see what I mean. Uh, if we go here to blank. And I've got a free form exploration. I like this is a way that I like to sort of see what dimensions and metrics are available. So then let's just try. Um, so you see we have just source medium here. Then um, down here we've got uh, under first user, there's going to be a first user source medium. We've got a session source medium. Um, down here. So you can see that we have session source medium, first user source medium, and then just source medium. Okay. But how, how do I report on that? Um, we go back here to reports and the under acquisition, I don't have the ability to pick those. I won't, I won't make you watch me go back through that, but just take my word for it. You can't, I can't pick the just source medium. Well, it turns out that, that that source medium dimension or just the default channel grouping dimension, those are the ones that use the attribution model that you specify in the admin settings. Weirdly, those we find if we go under advertising and then performance all channels. And I don't, I don't really understand why this isn't grouped with acquisition. It seems like uh, it should be part of acquisition. Um, so now you'll notice I just have default channel group. It doesn't say first user, it doesn't say session. And I have source platform, source medium campaign. Weirdly, source medium doesn't show up here. It, it is an, a dimension that exists. Um, I'm not, not quite clear on, on why that is. I, I will I will say, though, that this data-driven attribution model, which is the, the one that Google recommends, and it is the default, is incredibly powerful. So this model, what this model does is, if we go back to our example here, 
what it'll do is is it builds a model over time based on performance on your website to understand how different sources are contributing to conversions. So in this case, like like over time, if it saw that Facebook, if if a Facebook ad as the first visit had a high likelihood of re resulting in a conversion, then it might start to weight um, conversion value onto Facebook ad uh, visits um, versus potentially other channels. But the most important thing it does is it doesn't actually give all of the credit to one of these. It'll actually share the credit amongst the different sources that are con contributing to somebody ultimately purchasing on my website, which as marketers is how we tend to think about it. We don't think the last thing somebody does is all important. The first thing somebody does is all, all important. We talk about the customer journey and how, like, what are the different touch points? So this data-driven attribution model not only gives credit to all of the touch points, but it learns over time based on performance data, based on people converting, which of the, the channels really should be weighted more heavily than others and shares the credit. So it's a really cool attribution model, really powerful feature of GA4. And to take advantage of it, you've got to go to this uh, advertising performance all channels report. So then here we can see um, an interesting byproduct of this is under conversions, you'll see that we have 0.42. Some of them are fractional conversions. And the reason for that is because it's doing this sort of sharing the credit because um, the model says uh, it's giving credit to multiple touch points um, and not so a given conversion might be attributed to more than one source, but it's not going to double count. It's going to say that this source accounts for 40% of this conversion and, and this other one 60% or something like that. The other thing I'll point out about this, well, a couple things I'll point out about this report. One is that um, I can't edit it. <laughs> And I'm in the demo account, so I wouldn't be able to edit it, but in an account that I have full administrative permissions, I can't edit it either, which is frustrating. The, the reason I was I wanted to be able to do that is I wanted to add source medium as a dimension, but apparently I can't, which is too bad. But it also means I can't add other metrics and whatnot to this report. Um, kind of weird. I guess it's just because this report must get calculated behind the scenes, which is probably also why we can't pick source medium, that it's just, you can't just sort of willy-nilly pick your own dimensions. There are certain dimensions that Google has gone through the process of doing attribution um, using the whichever attribution model that you pick. The last thing I'll show you about this report is it shows just conversions here, but let's say that you're an e-commerce website and what you really care about is purchases. Well, I can just um, say, I just want to see purchases, um, key feature of this report. So make sure you take advantage of that. So then what we can do, just sort of to wrap things up, uh, in this instance, so organic search gets um, attribution for uh, 348.5 conversions using the data-driven model. Then if we go back over to, so 348, the decimal value for now. Uh, and then if we look at the traffic acquisition, which would be the last, um, the uh, last way they got to the website. Um, so then under all events, for some reason, this pop-up is being a little wonky right now. I ordinarily, I could pick just purchases. I'm not going to be able to. So I can't show you that comparison. Um, but in any case, ordinarily, I could see how many purchases and then start to compare the difference. Nonetheless, I guess the, the, the key point is that we have this first, the user acquisition with the first user dimensions, which is really valuable as a marketer because I think Definitely more interesting to me than the last way somebody got to the website is the first way they did. But most interesting to me is this uh, data-driven attribution model that I can specify as the default for the account. And then I can come here and I can see how um, the sort of 
how different sources are contributing along the way in the customer journey. This is, from my point of view, is the truest sense of what's driving uh, conversions on my website. So, there you go.